Okay, hello. What we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we want to actually create what is called a sign diagram in order to solve inequalities. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we want to do here. We want to create an effective sign diagram in order to solve inequalities and in order to do so there's four basic steps that you need to follow. The first thing is that we always want to make the right hand side equal to zero. The next thing is that we want to factorize the left hand side of the equation and if that means that there's a numerator and a denominator then we need to factor both of those. Then we need to determine what important values there are, in other words where the numerator and both the, and the denominator are equal to zero. And then we're going to create a sign diagram to solve the inequality. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, situation here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do an equal first. If we wanted to go ahead and solve for this, then basically what we would do is we would just say x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So therefore we go x plus 2 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x would be equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 2. So notice that this first step, even if it was an inequality or an equality, we would basically do the same thing by moving everything to the left hand side set an equal to zero, factor, and then we basically found the important values and that's when this particular numerator, because there is no denominator, is actually equal to zero and by using the zero product property we can solve for the value of x. Now, things go a little bit different when that is no longer an equal sign and let's say for example it is an inequality or in this case a greater than sign. Now, we're going to go through the same process here. So let's say that this is x squared minus 4 has to be greater than 0. That's step number 1. We want to factorize it. So that's x plus 2. x minus 2 is greater than 0. Then I'm going to go ahead and determine all the important values. So here's my important values. Okay, that's when x is going to be equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 2. Okay. So what that means then is I'm going to create a sign diagram now to solve for the inequality. Now watch what happens. I'm actually going to take a look at each one of these factors separately. I'm going to take a look at x plus 2 and I'm going to take a look at x minus 2. And then I'm going to take a look at what happens when I actually take these two and I multiply them together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a line, line graph here for this, for this, and finally for this. And I'm going to line it up so that they're all coordinated with each other and aligned. Now, if I was to go ahead and just take a look at the values of x plus 2, where is this actually going to be equal to 0? It's going to be equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 2. So here's that negative 2. It is actually 0 there. Now, what's the value of this particular factor for any other value that you have? Well, say for example, if I put in a value of 0 here, 0 plus 2 is going to be 2, so that's a positive value. So everything to the right of this is going to give me a positive value, and everything to the left of negative 2 is going to make this x minus 2 a negative value. I'm going to do exactly the same thing here, except for on this side here, it is 2 there. And it's 0 there. Now, of course, if I go ahead and put in a 3, 3 minus 2 is going to be 1, so that's a positive value. And everything here to the left of that is going to be negative. Now, what's going to happen then is I'm going to have to take a look at what happens when I go ahead and multiply these two values. So what's going to happen then is I'm going to look down, multiply down. So if I go down this way, I know that this value at negative 2 is still going to be equal to 0 because 0 times a by negative is still 0. And even a positive times 0 is still going to be a 0 value. So that's a 0 value there. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at everywhere else now. If I take a negative and a negative number and I multiply it together, I would hope that everybody sees that that, in fact, would be a positive number. And if I take anything in between here, that's all positive multiplied by all negative numbers, that's, of course, going to be all negative numbers. And over here, this is going to be a positive number. Now, this is where you have to go back and take a look at what you're actually looking for. We want to find out where all of these values are actually greater than zero. Well, 
I know that this right over here is equivalent to this, which is equivalent to this, and where are these two numbers when they're multiplied together, when will they actually be greater than zero or positive? So, well, it's obvious from here. It's going to be all of these values, so x is going to be e is going to be less than negative 2, or x is going to be greater than 2. Okay, and there you go. That's how you would go ahead and solve this. Okay, let's take a look at another example. And let's see if we can do exactly the same thing. Let's make this one a little bit more complicated. 